freeze drying or dehydration. What are the pros and cons? What are the benefits? Why do we use both? And how to use both? So we're gonna be chatting about that today in this live. And the reason why I wanted to do this live with you is because Nate and I have finished our raw vegan traveling ebook called Tales from the Tailgate. It is available right now for you to buy in the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle, which is linked in my bio. So if you wanna go grab the bundle, please do so because that ebook is officially available for everyone to go grab. And it's a 277 page ebook with all kinds of information, how we plan, how we pack, how we prepare our food, um, you know, freeze dryer versus dehydration. So I go into great detail in that chapter for that. Nate goes into detail about his solar power generator that he created. Uh, we have over a hundred recipes in there and each recipe has a story talking about when we ate it or what we were doing while we ate it and all kinds of fun stuff in that book. So please go grab it. Um, if you haven't yet, it's in the bundle. Um, yes, freeze dried, freeze dried food is amazing. So, uh, if you have any questions, please post in the chat. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between the two, because I have had a few people message and say, can a freeze dryer, uh, replace a dehydrator? Do I need to have both? Um, what's the difference between the two? Can I make the wraps in the freeze dryer or, you know, all, all these questions. So I wanted to share a little bit about it here. So again, get the bundle and get the tales from the tail tailgate ebook that's in the bundle. And you'll be able to make a lot of the cold soak recipes that we have in the ebook as well. So the recipes in the ebook are separated into three sections. There's the fresh recipes. So it's like smoothies and salads and, and stuff that we take with us and eat fresh. Then there's the dehydrated recipes. So there's burgers, tacos, there's a few wraps. There's two new wrap recipes in there as well. And then there's the freeze dried recipes. So these are all the recipes um, that we use for when we're backpacking as raw vegans. We make our own freeze dried uh, meals and I'll I'll let you know a little bit too if you don't have a freeze dryer how you can still make those meals and I have some links for tons of stuff in the book as well so we are very very excited we worked really hard on this book Nate put so much into it as well so he is really happy to share all the information that he shared in there too um, but yeah, there is a chapter in there talking specifically about freeze dryers and dehydration. So, you know, how to use the freeze dryer, the, how the freeze dryers became to be like, there's a little history in there too, the pros and cons and benefits. And with freeze drying, it's totally different than dehydration. Both of them are food storage techniques but both of them are very different and both of them have very different outcomes. So a freeze dryer does not replace a dehydrator and a dehydrator does not replace a freeze dryer. I personally feel that it is beneficial to have both. Freeze dryer, however, is way more expensive. Um, the dehydrator is a lot more affordable, but the dehydrator will never do what the freeze dryer does and the freeze dryer will not do what the dehydrator does. So as a difference, the freeze dryer makes food like basically waterless. So think space food. If you've ever gone to the store and gotten freeze dried fruit, it's really super crunchy and it almost disintegrates into a powder. Like you can crush it into a powder and it's totally powdered. And that's where they make a lot of powdered things. So you just freeze dry it and then you grind it into a powder and then you've got, you've got the powder of whatever it is. The cool thing about freeze drying is that when you freeze dry food, you retain up to 97% of the nutrition, but with dehydration, it's a, not like tons less, but you're not getting the same height of nutrition stored because of the, you know, the warm air that blows, the oxidation that happens, that kind of thing. But with freeze drying, because they are drying under vacuum and frozen, 
that the nutrition stays intact. So it's a much better food preservation technique. Now with dehydrators, it's a little different because you get a completely different texture with dehydrated food. So you can dehydrate things until they're really hard, but they take forever to reabsorb water. Um, you know, they're, they're more pliable which is beneficial for making things like the wraps. It's great for making the burger patties and you know the taco grounds and stuff like that. So yeah, not even close. Freeze drying is night and day difference. You could see see the difference for both. Oh, oh. Um, yeah, freeze drying is different for nutrition for sure. There is a, a a very you know difference between the two, and freeze drying is definitely the way to go if you're doing food preservation purposes. Now, if you don't have a freeze dryer, it's not the end of the world. You can still dehydrate, but with freeze dried food, once you freeze dry it, if you store it properly under vacuum with an oxygen absorber, that food can last up to 25 years and still retain 97% of its nutrition. So it's the ultimate raw vegan food prep um, and food storage technique. So when you dehydrate, you have, you know, maybe three, maybe five years if it's really stored really well up to five years. But, you know, it depends if there's moisture, if there's high humidity levels, you know, if the seal comes off, then the dehydrated food doesn't necessarily um, last as long. I love freeze-dried mangoes. Yes, freeze-dried mangoes are awesome. I actually have right here um, some freeze-dried jackfruit. This stuff is amazing. We we bought a huge jackfruit when we were in LA with John Kohler <coughs> one time, and it was one of the best jackfruits that I'd ever had. And we decided to freeze dry it and see what it would, what would it would do. But look at this, here we go. Mm. Mm. It reminds me of a fortune cookie. <laughs> if you've had a fortune cookie, that's kind of what it reminds me of. <laughs> so that's the texture kind of a freeze dried food melts in your mouth once it, it once it hits that um moisture it just dissolves and it's so delicious and you can make a lot of things freeze dried and just add water so that's what Nate and I do and inside the tales from the tailgate raw on the road ebook that we just wrote in the bundle, so get the bundle if you haven't gotten it yet so you can read that book, we have our cold soak recipes. So we, we made these recipes so that all you do is add water, let it sit for a couple hours, and you've got yourself a raw meal ready to go while you're backpacking, camping, or for emergencies, or just because they're delicious. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's very, very, very cool. We have the Harvest Right freeze dryer. There are a few new ones um, on the market. I do have links to the other one that is available. I can't remember the name of it, but it's in the ebook, the Tales from the Tailgate ebook. So you can go check it out and see all the different ones. But if you didn't want to buy a freeze dryer, a lot of the ingredients that you can use in the recipes are available online and in the ebook. We wrote a list of all of the different kinds of freeze-dried food that you can buy like on Amazon. So if you want, if you really wanted to start making your own cold soaks and you don't have the freeze dryer, you can always buy freeze-dried ingredients on Amazon or from the company itself. And you can then make your cold soaks just with their products. So you don't, like I said, you don't have to have a freeze dryer because they are expensive, um, but they're really cool, especially if you're into like food storage or you find like good deals on produce. Like if you're buying produce in bulk, you can um, freeze dry it and just use it later. So I've got, for an example, we got in LA again, when we were with John, uh, we got bell peppers, organic bell peppers. We got a huge case, like massive. It was, 
I don't even know, like 25 pounds for like 10 bucks because they were kind of on their way out, but they were still really nice. Um, so when we got back, we're like, well, we can't eat all of these. We ate tons of them fresh, right? Cause we're raw, <laughs> but we had so many left that we needed to preserve them so that we could use them later. So we tried both ways. These ones are dehydrated and these ones are freeze dried. So we have both um, dehydrated and freeze dried and the freeze dried ones obviously will last longer because they are freeze dried and we use a vacuum lid to keep it sealed and we, we we're going to start putting um, oxygen absorbers in these as well just so they last a little bit longer but these are amazing to add extra flavor and nutrition to your meals like you can add it um, to your sauces your marinara's uh, all kinds of stuff you can just take a few and add it, it just adds some beautiful flavor and it's easy to preserve. So all of those bell peppers, we still have, <laughs> they're just here preserved and we can use them. They've retained up to 97% of their nutrition and all we have to do is add water. But like I said, if you don't have a freeze dryer, you don't have the finances to get one. Um, for the cold soaks, I recommend this. Um, it's a sampler set from I believe it's called Harm, Harmless, Harmless Harvest, um, Harmony House, Harmony House. So um, this kit right here has tons of different kinds of freeze dried foods. So there's like freeze dried spinach and um, jalapeno, tomato powder, uh, corn. There's all kinds of different things in here. And what we did was we bought this before we even had the freeze dryer. We bought one of these boxes and we made ourselves like a coconut. Obviously not all the ingredients are in here cause we have freeze dried powdered coconut. We also have freeze dried miso and all the links to all the freeze dried stuff that we have purchased and that we love are in the Tales from the Tailgate ebook. So don't worry, anything that's underlined, you can click it and go grab it if you want. And if any of the links don't work, um, just message me and I can get you a new link. So yeah, what we did was we just like made up these little cold soaks and we would take them when we go overnight backpacking. Because when you're backpacking overnight and you've got all your food on your back along with your tent, your clothes, um, like your water that you have to take for the amount of time that you're gone. Like you're carrying a lot on your back. So trying to take things like melons and cucumbers and heavy water rich foods is really challenging when you are hiking up a mountain and you're staying there overnight on the top of a mountain. So having the cold soaks, which weigh so little, because freeze dried food really doesn't weigh very much. It's very, very, very light. So we just add water and we are able to have a nice little meal up on the top of a mountain or we have it as lunch the next day. We do take fresh food up with us because we're troopers and we like to see what we can take. Um, but yeah, the cold soaks are amazing and you can make them too without a dehydrate or without a freeze dryer. Just follow all the links to everything. There are a few ingredients that you might not be able to find um, that are kind of unique to if you have a freeze dryer. You can always leave them out of those recipes. If you can't find them, you can add other vegetables um, that you have that you're able to buy. One of those ingredients is the freeze dried black forbidden rice. This stuff is so good. It tastes kind of like popcorn. Um, and what we did was one time we made the freeze dry or we made the bloomed rice. And again, links are all in the Tales from the Tailgate ebook, which is in the bundle. So go grab that link is in my bio or in the description box. But what we did was that we wanted to add the black forbidden rice into our raw, um, like the tomato curry, I think. And then, so we de dehydrated it. And when we had it in there, we were soaking it and it took forever for the water to rehydrate the rice because when you dehydrate, things get really, really hard and it's a lot harder for them to reabsorb the water compared to freeze dried. Freeze dried food absorbs water 
super fast. So it's really easy to rehydrate, whereas dehydrated food takes a little longer and never gets to that softness that you can get from freeze dried. So we didn't really enjoy the dehydrated bloomed rice in those meals. It was too hard to chew and it just wasn't enjoyable. So we were like, well, let's try freeze drying it. So we tried freeze drying it and it is amazing. Like just adding a little bit of water and you've got sprouted black forbidden rice that you can add to your meals or what have you. So anytime I need um, black forbidden rice, I just take a scoop out of our freeze dried jar here and I rehydrate with some water so I don't have to wait 72 hours for it to soak or what have you. Like if I need it right now, I can just rehydrate the freeze dried stuff. And what we do is we'll, we'll get like four or five um, bags of the black forbidden rice and we'll soak it all for the three days. And then we rinse and drain, obviously do all that kind of stuff once it's bloomed. Then we put it on the trays and we just freeze dry it all. So we've got like tons of freeze dried black forbidden rice that we can just add water to and then add to our meals if we want to. Um, it's always nice to make it fresh, fresh, but it's an awesome way to add more um, to your diet when you don't have the time. That's another thing too. It's like, if you have all this stuff ready to go, right? If say you don't have any bell peppers and you're like, I don't want to go to the store, but I want to make this thing and it has bell peppers. You can just take it out of your jar and add it to your meal. It's super easy, super fun. So, so those are just a few little, um, tips or ideas when it comes to freeze drying or dehydration. So eat, both of them have, benefits and pros and both of them are different so like i said earlier in the video i've had a lot of people ask like if i buy a freeze dryer do i need a dehydrator you know and, and they have completely different outcomes when it comes to texture and pliability because i've had people say like can you make the wraps in the freeze dryer you can't they'll turn into like like the um jackfruit you can't wrap that. <laughs> you need the pliability that comes from dehydration. So it's a totally different process. And with freeze drying, they basically freeze down to like minus 50 and they slowly heat up and the food never goes above like a hundred degrees. I think the food stays around 90 Fahrenheit, which is still super considered raw. So freeze drying is considered raw. Um, and it never gets be beyond that temperature, but they have like these little heating lamps that kind of slowly thaw out the food. And when it's thawing out, because it's done under vacuum, it's called sublimation. So the water that's in the food is immediately goes from solid to gas. Like it skips the liquid phase. So it goes from solid to gas and then the gas is sucked out and then it turns into water. So there's like a, a spout in the back and it drips out water that was from your food. So you could technically drink it because <laughs> um, it's from your food and it, or you could use it for your plants or what have you, but that's the water that came from your food that you're freeze drying. And that process is very different than dehydration because dehydration is just warm air that's blown over your food. So it slowly dries it over time, but it creates a very different texture. So if you're looking for different textures, then each machine is going to do something different and each machine is its own awesomeness. So um, watermelon lime is asking, how's the Korean barbecue must have been a 10 out of 10. It was for those of you who uh, hung out with us last night, I went live with raw chef Yin and I made all of the recipes except for the kimchi. Cause I already had kimchi in the fridge. Uh, but I made all of her recipes from her Korean barbecue course, which is also in the bundle link is in my bio or in the description box. If you're watching on YouTube and it was amazing. I love bundle time because I love trying all the new recipes from all the creators. I was so blown away by her creativity for that, for that feast. It was so good. I think my favorite sauce was the sauce that went with the green onion salad. That one was amazing, super delicious. And I loved the samjang. It's like a 
it's like kind of like a, well, it's a Korean, Korean barbecue sauce. <laughs> and it was so good. There was like a tahini dipping sauce, a really simple one that made a nice balance between the spicy and, you know, it was kind of creamy. Um, I loved it all. I loved all the different flavors and you can make your taco with different things. Like you could put carrots on it or you could put the spinach namul on it or like there were so many ways that you could make these little bite-sized tacos kind of. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, you just eat them with a lettuce and it was just, it was so good. I hope everyone gets to enjoy um, that. So if you bought the bundle, it's the Korean barbecue course. It's like a course with a, a downloadable PDF so you can follow all the recipes. Since you live in the desert, have you ever tried dehydrating in the sun? Good question. Um, we have not. Um, I know some people have like the solar dehydrators. It really depends on what you are dehydrating. Uh, but you could totally do it here in the summer when it gets to 115 degrees because <laughs> we do see 110, 115 degrees often here in the desert. The only thing is that unless there's wind blowing, sometimes it depends on how you have it covered. Sometimes there can be a buildup of moisture. So you kind of need a good airflow to help blow away any of that moisture because otherwise it can take a lot longer. Plus it really depends on what you're dehydrating because if you need something to dehydrate over 10 hours, you're not going to get a consistent 100 and 15 or 110 degrees Fahrenheit for those whole 10 hours. It might be 85 in the morning and maybe it's like 85 or 75 in the evening. So you might only get that 115 for a couple hours, but it is totally possible. I know people who have done it. They, you know, they put their stuff out and they dehydrate things just like with the sun, which is to totally cool too. I love bundle time too. I know, isn't bundle time so awesome? Do you make your own kimchi? I do. I also purchase kimchi because I kind of like to have different varieties of different things because you know me, I like variety. Um, but I do make my own kimchi. Nate also has an amazing kimchi recipe too that he makes. Um, but I, I enjoy making my own kimchi. And when you make your own kimchi, you are reintroducing your own bacteria into the kimchi. So it's kind of like a cycle. It's really awesome. And I make one that is a radish, cabbage, carrot, sunchoke um, kimchi, which I really like. But Raw Chef Yin in the bundle, link in my bio, she has a kimchi recipe in her Korean barbecue ebook. So you can make your own if you, even if that's the only recipe you made from her course, like at least you can make your own kimchi too. What equipment is needed? Um, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Um, if you could expand a little bit about what you're talking about for equipment. Um, I don't know if you're talking about this, but for the freeze dryer, you need a freeze dryer. And for dehydration, you need a dehydrator. So they're two different machines. And with the freeze dryer, you get trays. I like these little stacking um, corners because you have to freeze the food before it goes in the freeze dryer. That helps out the freeze dryer. So it's not freezing from fresh because that can take a lot extra time. So, you know, it's nice to help out the freeze dryer by freezing the food first. So we get these little stacking corners that help to stack the trays. But again, all the links to everything are in the Tales from the Tailgate, Raw on the Road, Traveling ebook. Uh, link is in my bio if you want to get that. But yeah, really you don't need too much. Um, between the two, which one retains the most nutrition and enzymes? Between the two, freeze drying will retain the most nutrition and enzymes. Even though dehydration is a great storage technique and is acceptable on a raw food diet, um, you're going to retain more nutrition and more enzymes when you freeze dry food. So it really depends on what outcome you're trying to achieve because Freeze dryers aren't going to give you the same consistency as a dehydrator. So it really depends on what you're making and why, uh, but both machines are great. I feel like we just got through the earlier bundle. <laughs> yes, um, so we are part of a lot of bundles because we want to give as much information as we can, but we still need to pay our bills, right? So, uh, but we try to pack the bundles with as much as we possibly can. 
um, so that they are affordable and you know there's tons of value in them for you. This raw bundle is going until May 12th and this bundle is exclusively only brand new products. So it there's nothing in this bundle that has been in any other bundle ever before because we only put brand new stuff in this one. And the two new things that we put in this bundle is our Tales from the Tailgate traveling as a raw vegan as traveling including camping and hiking and adventures and air travel and road trips and all the stuff we use and how we do it how we plan how we pack and safety tips and all kinds of stuff there's also 100 recipes in there too but we also contributed the ebook i wrote with chef aj called make it raw volume three there's 47 brand new recipes in there and they're some of my absolute favorites like the raw vegan gnocchi the raw vegan pierogies um or pierogi the uh chana masala there's there's so many delicious ones in that ebook, uh, but we contributed both of those to this bundle and we will be part of other bundles throughout the year. There's a few in the summertime. There's one over Black Friday and we add different things to those bundles, but this bundle is specifically only new stuff. So no one has anything that's in this bundle unless you've purchased the bundle. Link is in my bio. Um, which book has your radish kimchi? The radish kimchi recipe is, I believe in, I know I put it in uh, the ebook from the vegan health bundle. So if you bought the vegan health bundle, the one that was in March, 2023, that recipe is in the group collaboration ebook. So if you bought that one, you can have that. But I don't believe my kimchi is anywhere else. I know Nate's is in his dude food ebook at Raw Nanny Nate on his page, on his store. You might have to DM him to get the link to his store. Um, but that recipe will likely go in a future ebook because I haven't, because I made it up and I posted it on my page and I added it to that book. So I haven't like put it in any specific book yet, but it'll be coming for sure. I'll have to add that. For the Korean barbecue, um, Ra Chef Yin has her recipe in the bundle. So if you do get the bundle, open up her Korean barbecue course and she has her kimchi recipe in there. So I made her carrot namul makes a nice side salad. It does. It was really light and really delicious. And it really helped like bring in the other flavors of everything too. How difficult is it to use a freeze dryer? The thing with the oil and all that. Honestly, it's very easy. Um, there is an oil pump and you do have to replace the oil. Like I think it's every 30 um, freeze dry uh, sessions. So you do change the oil out, but they have videos and, and you know there's instructions and it's pretty easy to do. Or if you have the finances, you can get the oilless one which you never have to do anything to. It just is the same way, but it's a lot more expensive. We went with the oil one just because it was too expensive for us. Uh, so we just replaced the oil after 30 rounds using the freeze dryer. We haven't replaced it yet because we haven't done 30 rounds. We're probably around halfway there. So we will change it, but it's pretty easy. I'm sure Nate will make a video when he changes the oil. Um, and honestly, the steps to do the freeze dryer are pretty easy. First, you need to chop all the stuff and either make like, um, we have, where is my, I guess I didn't have it here. Uh, but for example, these are freeze dried uh, Brussels sprouts because again, we were in LA and we got a good deal on Brussels sprouts. So we wanted to freeze dry them. So these ones are freeze dried with a date mustard sauce. And they're really good. They're really good. I like to eat them just as snacks. <laughs> uh, sometimes I'll just go in and grab a couple. But um, so all you do is you chop the vegetables, you blend them, blend a sauce and pour it over. If you're making kind of like a, like we like to make this cauliflower masala. We have a few different recipes in the Tales from the Tailgate ebook, which you can eat fresh. You don't have to freeze dry it, uh, but it makes a huge amount. So, um, we make that and we freeze dry it and it's like cheese puffs. They're so good. We like to take them camping and, and stuff. And they're just like, it's just like cheese puffs, but with awesome flavor and healthy for you. So, um, 
then you just put the food that you chop or whatever on the trays and you don't want to go up beyond like maybe three quarters of an inch high because you know there's there's only so much space in the in the freeze dryer so you want to just spread it out evenly across the tray freeze everything first for i think it's 48 hours you freeze it all first and then you put all the trays in the freeze dryer and turn on the freeze dryer and the freeze dryer does everything for you it usually takes around 25 to 40 hours to run a batch and we have the five tray it's the large one um, they have an extra large one now it wasn't available when we purchased ours so we got the five tray which was the largest one at the time and it makes a fair amount of stuff so we use that when we're making like big batches of like the cauliflower masala or if we have you know an excess of Brussels sprouts or bell peppers or even fruit. Like you can put tons of fruit in there, mangoes, jackfruit. One of our favorite things to freeze dry is yellow dragon fruit. It tastes like cotton candy. It is so good. Um, so there's tons of things that you can put in there. Um, but yeah, 25 to 40 hours is usually an amount of time. And depending on how much you pay for electricity, it's around like, I mean, it depends. It can be anywhere from like eight to you know, a little more dollars per round. So it's not that bad. Um, it's definitely more expensive than a dehydrator because a dehydrator takes about six cents an hour worth of power, give or take. Um, and you're not dehydrating for 40 hours usually, um, unless you're trying to fully dry something, um, but it doesn't even really need 40 hours. So most of the time we use our dehydrator for like wraps for 12 hours or what have you. So it, it's, it doesn't cost as much. That's why we wanted to get the big freeze dryer so that when we do run a batch, we can fill more trays with stuff. So, but it's really easy to use. It's really easy to use. And like I said, they have videos on their website or whatever, and they have their instruction book and stuff. Just another reason to love the raw bundle. Everything is new. Yes, we love the raw bundle. Every single year, everything is brand new. I'll be creating something brand new for 2025. So yeah, it's fun. If you want to get the Tales from the Tailgate ebook, make it raw volume three, the Korean barbecue course, Chris Kendall's big banana book, which he has tons of recipes that all feature bananas. He's got information in there and stuff. Um, there's just so much Daniel McKinnon's edible art, which is an amazing ebook. There's raw waffles in this bundle as well. So please go grab it. If you haven't yet link is in my bio or in the description box was just wondering how to stay raw, low fat, raw vegan during multi-day hiking trips. The key is the cold soaks. The key is the cold soaks and bringing enough water, especially if you are in a desert or drier location where you don't have access to springs or water um, options, right? So like if you're hiking in the Colorado in, in the spring or summer, you probably have tons of water options. And I would take something like a Catadine water filter so that you can just filter water whenever you need it, whenever you get to a water uh, station. But you know, when you're in the desert, you have to take the water with you unless you know there's a spring or what have you. But even then, it's not guaranteed that the spring is viable. Like there might not be any water at that spring. So you have to take enough water. It's so incredibly important to take water with you. And I talk about that in the Tales from the Tailgate ebook as well. So multiple days hiking, you can totally do it. Um, if you take a little fresh fruit, like for example, when Nate and I do our overnight camping trips. We have done a few of them. We take a melon with us just for breakfast for the next day. And we take our cold soaks and we make our cold soaks with our freeze dried ingredients. And again, recipes are in the tales from the tailgate ebook. So you can make your own cold soaks. They're raw vegan. They're low fat. They're delicious. And all you have to do is add water to them and enjoy those chew them really well obviously uh, but yeah you can totally stay raw while you're hiking and while you're camping and while you're doing all that kind of stuff and that's exactly what we talk about in the ebook tales from the tailgate it's basically everything that we've learned over the last five to six years when it comes to adventures and traveling and road trips and stuff you're lucky because nate is so good with all that stuff so he'll change the oil very easily. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's so true. I mean, if I had to, I would figure it out. It would be okay. But yeah, he's really into that kind of stuff. So um, he's a great one to, to do that with. 
Uh, do we have any other questions here? I wonder why not as many creators from the Raw Bundle are on Chef AJ's show this time. Hope it's not rude to ask. You know, honestly, Chef AJ is, she has, is too busy. She just had too much going on to be able to include us on her channel. I will be on Chef AJ's YouTube on Sunday, May 12th, the final day of the bundle. We're going to be making the Fiesta Rice from Make It Raw Volume 3. So that'll be really fun. Um, but yeah, she was just way, way, way too busy. And doing all the lives that she did during her bundle, um, she just, she can't do that many lives anymore. It's just too much. I mean, even when I do lives and I do say like three a day, it's a lot. It's a lot of lives over and over and over again. Even though we love it, even though we love it, it's still, it's a huge chunk of our day. And, um, you know, like we have to plan everything so that we still eat. We still go to the bathroom between lives. So yeah, it's a lot of work to run a bundle. Um, but that's why she hasn't done um, as many lives, but she also might not do as many lives next year for the vegan health bundle, just because it's just, it's just too much to try to get everybody on her show. Um, I'd love a video course on raw vegan recipes for the freeze dryer. Most stuff you find are meat and dairy. Erica, go grab the bundle. If you haven't yet, our tales from the tailgate ebook has our freeze dryer recipes in it. Um, we don't have video for it because it's basically just you know, scooping freeze dried ingredients into a, a container <laughs> and, and then sealing it. So it's not like too much, but we may add that. We may start doing stuff like that for our Tales from the Tailgate YouTube channel, which we started like four years ago, but we haven't really been able to add anything to it. Just life is like, there's just too much going on. Um, but we would like to start posting more over on Tales from the Tailgate. We have a, an Instagram page also called Tales underscore from the tailgate. If you want to follow along over there, we share a lot of nature stuff. Um, and we, we do want to get more active over there sharing and posting. So perhaps one day we will have videos showing, you know, how we make it, how we make the, the cold soaks, but all the recipes are in the tales from the tailgate ebook. How long do they last? Um, the Cold soak, like once you put all the cold soaks into your container and you vacuum seal it, it can last up to 25 years, depending on how well you preserve it. If you put an oxygen absorber in there, you seal it under vacuum, all those little details I talk about in the Tales from the Tailgate book. But 25 years, is that's what they say. With freeze-dried food, it can last forever as long as there's no moisture touching the food. As soon as there's a little bit of moisture, then you know stuff expands and it starts... To, it can go bad, it can get stale and stuff. But once it's fully freeze dried, if you store it properly, again, under vacuum or in a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber, you can have it last up to 25 years. So <laughs> what size of a dehydrator? So I recommend a nine tray Excalibur. That's the one that we have. That's the one that we use. It's, I believe the biggest tray size, which is what we prefer for the wraps because we have the trays, the silicone trays that are 14 by 14 inches and that makes two wraps. But the smaller dehydrators, the other tray size is 12 by 10. So it's a lot smaller. You can get three wraps out of that, but they're a lot smaller and they're rectangles. So they're a little harder to roll and stuff, uh, but it still works. If you do get a smaller one, it just takes a little longer to dry because more stuff is in the dehydrator, it's a smaller space, so there's not as much airflow. I prefer the nine tray Excalibur. That's been the one that we've used. We have two, we actually have three. One of them's in storage um, that we bring out usually for like Thanksgiving, or if we're going on a big trip and we, we're gonna be with lots of people and we wanna make lots of wraps, then we'll bring the third dehydrator um, home so we can use it. But we have two dehydrators in the house. One of them lives in the kitchen and one of them lives in the living room. And they've been amazing. So we've had them for years. The one I have is almost almost a decade old, never had a problem with it. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. We love Excalibur. And if you want a link to Excalibur, uh, send me a direct message and I will get you a link. Thank you for answering, you're very welcome. I wonder what's the story behind the ebook title, Tales from the Tailgate. So Tales, as in not like, a 
an animal's tail, but like tales, like stories. So it's like stories from our tailgate. And we travel a lot. We do a lot of camping. We do tons of hiking. Um, we do backpacking and we do air travel and road trips. And we just really love to travel and do fun stuff out in nature. And we are also raw vegan. So we want to be able to do that out in nature. So you can think of the name of our book as stories from our tailgate, basically tales from the tailgate. So that's, uh, where the title came from. And yeah, it's just tales. And each of the recipes that are in the ebook has kind of like a little story with it too. There's our story, how we got into this, how we met, um, the first time that, uh, Nate and I were like, on a trip together in Las Vegas about, I don't even know, like five, six years ago now, six years ago. And he brought with him his big backpack with his Vitamix and his knives and his cutting boards and his spices and everything. I was so super, super impressed. But I talk about all of that in the Tales from the Tailgate ebook. How do you get enough salt a day on a raw vegan diet? Um, I use miso which has sodium in it, but there's sodium in fruits and vegetables, especially vegetables. There's lots of sodium in like tomatoes and greens and sea vegetables. I definitely get enough sodium. It's actually um, pretty easy to get sodium in the diet. Uh, the average RDA, like the recommended amount is about 2,300 milligrams of sodium a day. I think that's a little high. Personally, I aim to get anywhere between, I, I aim for a thousand milligrams a day, which is really easy for me to get just by adding like a teaspoon or two of miso into my dressing. And, and that's pretty good. And I also get it in fermented foods or coconut aminos. Those are the three sources that I have um, sodium that's outside of the fruits and vegetables that I'm eating that naturally have small amounts of sodium, which is really enough for the body. If you feel lightheaded or you get low blood pressure issues, then having something like miso or coconut aminos or something like that can help. Uh, I personally have low, low, low blood pressure naturally. So if I don't have any extra sodium in my diet. Like if I don't do miso, I don't do coconut aminos, I don't do fermented foods, which I have done in the past. And I learned that that doesn't work for me uh, because I have naturally very low blood pressure. If I go completely um, overt salt free, I get really lightheaded, even though I'm eating enough, even though I'm eating variety, I still just, I'm like, oh, and my blood pressure gets way too low. So I use a little miso and it's amazing. Miso is great for the gut microbiome. It's delicious. It's awesome. So I don't mind that, but yeah, that's how I, I have sodium in my diet. Let's see. We have any other questions today? Doesn't look like we do. So we're going to sign off. Please go check out the ultimate raw vegan bundle. Link is in my bio or in the description box below. If you're watching on YouTube to get our new eBooks, make it raw three and tales from the tailgate where we talk about how we travel as raw vegans. Um, excited to see what's in store at the raw food mastery summit. Yes. Yes. That's another thing that we have going on. If you want a link to the summit, send me a direct message and I'll send you a link to the summit. It's completely free, completely free. And it starts tomorrow. So send me a direct message. I'll send you a link. You can sign up for free. You get to watch all the videos as they're released for free for like, I think it's 24 hours each video. So you can watch all of those videos. Um, I have an interview. Nate has an interview. John Kohler, um, Chef AJ's on there. Dr. Michael Greger's on there as well. So it's really awesome. But it's all free for you to join as you watch each day. So send me a link for that or send me a message and I'll send you a link for that if you're interested in joining um, the summit. So yeah, thank you again for watching. We will be back live at 3 p.m. PST, which is in about four hours from now. We are going to be making the flavored chickpeas. So we sprouted some chickpeas a couple days ago. They're ready to put in the freezer right now. So I'm going to flavor them. We're going to flavor them specifically. The one for this episode is going to be the biryani flavor. So I'm going to show how to do that. That recipe is in the Make It Raw 3 
ebook. So if you bought the bundle, you can follow along with me at three o'clock while we freeze our chickpeas so that we have them ready to go whenever we want to make a biryani or any other recipes that require marinated chickpeas. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be really fun. And then we are also going live at 5 p.m. PST, which is about six hours from now. We're going live with Raw Foodie Style, Kevin, who has also contributed to this bundle. He contributed his ebook for the love of tacos and his tacos are soft tacos. I'm going to be making the breakfast tacos because, you know, I, I, I'm really excited to share um, certain of the flavors in there. So we're going to be eating tacos together at 5 p.m. and talking about tacos and raw food and recipe creation and all that good stuff. So stay tuned. We've got some awesome lives coming up. And as always, I love you all and fruit on. Mm-hmm. <laughs>